Monday, everybody. This is 108 Stitches Baseball Talk this week on the Diamond. And here we go. I have a lot of natives that are restless in the chat room, but don't worry, guys. When the time comes that you learn patience, my goodness, okay, then I'm sure that uh, that politicians don't tell lies, okay? But no, no, I believe that they guys will. These guys are an excitable bunch is what they are. They're known for their dog checks. They're known for a lot of different things. But meanwhile, let I just want to introduce everybody real quick, get to the topics. First, we have a new crew member tonight. His name is Asha Nix. Before I get to George and Mark, why don't you give everybody an overview about what you do, Ashen, and welcome to the show tonight. Hey, man, appreciate it. Yeah, um, I run a little uh, sports network here in uh, North Texas called Peak One Sports, covering uh, local stuff, a little bit of national stuff, but uh, having a lot of fun, busy time right now. We cover the Rangers, but we also have uh, are covering Mavericks and Stars right now, as everybody knows, is it's a really exciting, busy time, and just glad to to be on with you tonight. Hey, Josh, hang with the dog check. At least let the guy be on five minutes before you get your dog check out. Don't worry, Ashton. You'll figure out what it is. It's a me. You know what? This guy again has no patience. So just say a quick dog check to these guys, so I can get to the other guys. Okay. Say dog check. Dog check. There you go, Josh. You're good enough. That's the fastest <laughs> dog check you've ever gotten. Uh, also, with our crew, we have George Icorn. Welcome back, George. Good to be back, Scott. Glad we're back on today. And obviously, it was great seeing you in Detroit at Comerica Park as well. Yeah, it sure was great. I enjoyed being there. I want to th thank Chad Crunk for his hospitality. He was really, really super. So, Chad, if you're out there listening. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you, whether it's spring training or out at, back in Detroit. That was a whale of a time. And Mark Meriday, welcome back, my friend. Thank you. I feel like it's been 100 years since I've seen you, man. You have an well, age today. <laughs> yeah, well, you haven't seen you haven't seen my uh, blood pressure and my diabetes reading, but yeah, that's okay. All right, so but Joshua Dorr is going to get to the hockey real quick. So here's what we're going to do. All right, hold off. Let me let everybody know what we're talking about. We're talking about the Kansas City Royals, Houston Astros, the Tiger Series at Miami, Pittsburgh Pirates, which Mark is going to lead us on, as well as the Philadelphia Phillies with Bryce Harper. So with that said, you know what, Mark? Let's just go ahead. Let's get your prediction on the Rangers and the Panthers. I'll tell you what, both of those teams are playing good hockey, but I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like the Panthers had a tougher road to, to hit. And uh, I like the Panthers against the Rangers, but I, it might go seven this time. Well, I have a feeling it will go seven. All right. Well, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and offer predictions around the horn? George, what do you think? Who's going to win it? I think the Panthers are going to win it. I think that uh, obviously they got a, a huge chip on their shoulders after last season and uh they look like they're out for revenge and and take nothing away from the rangers though they have a great team i agree it's going to go seven what about you ashton man i'll, I'll take the panthers as well I, I i agree with all of y'all it's going to go seven it's going to be a close series um it's tough to pick against the rangers in that situation but i'll go panthers as well yeah, the only reason why I'm going to go Panthers in this situation is I know teams that make it to the finals and lose that first year generally come back extremely hungry. And when they come back hungry the following year, it, the result changes. And well, I can guarantee you one thing about this series, the Panthers' road to the Stanley Cup won't be through the Vegas Golden Knights. So there you go. They're out. All right, so let's get to the baseball as it is. Kansas City Royals thump the Oakland A's on Sunday, 8-1, to one, and they have – now move to 10 games over 500. They're 29 and 19. All right, George Icorn, let's go out there and try to rationalize what's going on with the Royals. Boy, the Oakland A's were playing good for a while. Now they're like one and nine. So with that said, yeah. George, what do you think about the Royals? You see them a lot in Detroit. In fact, the Tigers yeah. are playing them tonight. Yeah, they are. They're playing them first uh, series uh, uh, for Detroit in Kansas City. They, they always have problems against the Royals. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people out there that weren't giving the Royals much of a chance. And I know it's a long season, but coming out of the gates, 29 and 19, they've got a really good home record, and they're hit, They're playing about 500 ball uh, on the road. Uh, I like their lineup. Uh, they've got good young talent, good hitters. Uh, you know, guys are hitting a, a lot higher than, for example, Detroit batters are hitting, and uh, plus they got a decent pitching staff. Detroit's got probably a little better pitching staff, but I'll tell you what, uh, 
Kauffman Stadium is going to be exciting this summer if the Royals keep it up because you got teams in this division, including Kansas City, of course, and Minnesota and Cleveland and Detroit. All of them are hungry, but it's going to be it's going to be a fun time this summer. And and I'm very high on the Royals. I mean, they've done a great job, and they're coming along really well this year. I, I think that uh, I think they're going to be in it for the long haul, Scott. Okay, let's go to the chat room real quick. DLO77, I appreciate the hockey talk. Scott means a lot to the crowd. Feel free to get back to baseball, no problem. I told you when Mark Meridai, George Eichhorn are on, and of course now Ash is part of the crew, and there's obviously hockey going on. I have zero problem mentioning hockey. They don't have a dedicated show to it, but I'm very open with the group that we have to talk about it on any given show. You're very, very welcome. We obviously, we know what we've got there. So, all right, Mark, let's talk about the Royals. I think the Royals remind me a lot of uh, one of those younger teams that came along the last couple of years, kind of like a, like Miami did a few years ago when they when they got hot with a young group and they found some pitching along the way. Um, I, I, I like Pasquatch. I, I think he's a hell of a leader for them. He means a lot to them being healthy this year, and I think that's very important for them. Um, and Salvador Perez is playing great baseball right now yeah. he really is and he's the leader of that team uh whether you like it or not um they are exciting to watch they, they, they have a hell of a record i agree 100 percent. and I, I hope they continue to to roll like this i really do it makes it's great for baseball to have teams like that uh be in the hunt let's go to will vogel's comment great comment too Candy, you also have a solid vet, veteran catcher in Salvador Perez. Well, you know what? You Well, you fall into the category with Mark Meriday. Great minds think alike. Well, look at that. So, all right, so let's go to him. Will's on fire tonight. Ranky's a solid veteran pitcher and his experience. True. Okay, let's keep going. Joshua does a ton of research and know, and know it through stuff. All right, keep it rolling. It's good to have Bo Crouch popping in a little bit. I know that Bo... And Josh, Joshua Dorr, you know, both found himself a new follower, whether you like it or not, Bo. This guy likes to follow you, so it's all good, man. So let's keep up the comments and teammates make the dream work. All right, Asha, go ahead. Yeah, these uh, as Royals teams, a, a big surprise um, from last year, looking like they were sellers of the trade deadline. Um, Garcia, Bobby Witt, you already mentioned Salvador Perez. Uh, a good one, two, three start off to their lineup. Um, and I guess it was last night, mm -hmm. Brady Stinger, nine, nine Ks. He pitched really well. And um, I, know, I know the A's got a little bit of offense there at the end, but still a solid win yesterday. Hey, Broadway Harewood from LinkedIn. Thank you very much for joining the show. We really, really appreciate it. So I'm going to go through all the chats before we move on to the next topic. I love it active chat room and boy we're buzzing tonight so let's keep going you know i, I like rocket scientists Bo, how many shows did you have today what is the overall right? he said you only caught the second one hey you know what it is what it is joshua door saying panthers versus stars i think that's a very realistic prediction i really really do all right let's keep it rolling on to the houston astros who defeated milwaukee nine to four for their ninth win in 11 games the astros are currently 21 up 26 down and we will be seeing the Milwaukee Brewers, Candy and I, on Wednesday night in the third game of their three-game series. So with that said, George, we'll, once again, we'll start off with you. The Houston Astros right now, it looks like, are starting to play much better baseball. You know, we realize that Dusty Baker is no longer the manager, but at some point or another, you've got to move on. So what do you think about what we're seeing out in Houston, George? Well, yeah, I, I definitely did not bury them. You know, some people... <laughs> Foolishly wanted to bury the Astros already. So they sit at 21 and 26. They've got too much talent not to be contenders. They're certainly contending now. They're playing better ball right now. I mean, you got El Tuve doing his thing, and, and Alvarez was only at 254, but uh, and Bregman at 225. These are guys that obviously are going to turn it around, hit better than they're doing right now. But yeah, they've got a lot of talent on that team. I mean, look what they look what they did when they came into Detroit. Justin Verlander. I mean, you talk about a guy getting, and it's not revenge. He loves the people of Detroit, but he comes in here and he sets the Tigers uh, down and uh, came up with a brilliant pitching performance a week or so ago uh, in 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 Comerica Park. So uh, Verlander has found his uh, mark again, and I, I think 
I think the Astros are definitely going to be in it for the long haul. They get too much talent not to be. I want to talk about this real quick. Butch Davis, Candy, put that one up. The Detroit Tigers are on TV tonight on FS1. Here's the situation for people in South Florida, okay? Comcast no, or Xfinity no longer wasn't able to work out a deal here. So the Marlins games, if you are on Xfinity, are no longer available because of the bankruptcy proceedings that are going on. Me personally, you know what? That's a good thing I have MLB.com as a backup if I needed it to go ahead and do that. Again, we all know about the situation with the Bally's where they're going bankruptcy. Some cable providers offer them, some don't. I'll be curious to see what's going on on Wednesday when I get to the ballpark. So, and, and yeah, yeah, you're right, Josh. This is definitely not Ashton's first rodeo. I, the one thing I really take a lot of pride in before I bring on new people is I get this opportunity to talk to these particular individuals right away. And I'd like to think after 44 years in this business, okay, I can judge good talent. When I got on the phone with Ashton, this guy was an absolute no-brainer to bring on because not only because he really truly believes in collaborating. What Ashton has been able to help us do is promote promote a lot of our content on Twitter slash X. And when I mentioned collaborate, collaborate, Ashton was an absolute dynamite individual and has such an outstanding positive attitude. And I, I'll get as much airtime as he can. I'm just so glad that it happens to work out on the show, baseball, where we can use some great baseball minds, Ashton. So, so far, so good, but we're far from done. All right, with that said, Mark, <laughs> let's talk about the Astros. Uh, you know, they just got Christian Javier back, too, and I think their pitching staff, again, you hit on Verlander, but it's the young guys that they have in that staff that really helped them out. You know, I, I don't look at the first part of the baseball season and lose my mind because it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And as you said, you know, they change managers. They got to get used to a new guy calling the shots on the diamond. It, it doesn't matter what you do in spring training. It's spring training. You're trying to figure out who the best 26 are that you're going to bring to bring to the stadium for regular season. Now they kind of got their feet wet and they kind of figured out what's going on. And this is a veteran ball club. And I think they'll be okay. I, I really do. I, I think they'll be right in the hunt come, come August, September. All right. You know, I want to go to this comment, Rocket Scientist 95. So if Bally's out, does that mean that Quig Minervini is going to get sick? No, I'll, I'll answer that right now. Just because – just because Bally's is out, they're still on. They're just not on the Comcast Xfinity. But a little bit of information about Craig Minervini. This guy here will land a local job if he wants one, but he's also gone out there and worked in the national media as well. So Craig Minervini will be fine. There's no way that he'll be out of sight, out of mind. He may be out of sight if he gets a national job. But this guy is not only a great friend of mine, but he's the most marketable, credible individual in the media and, and I tell you, one of the, my best, better friends in the industry. So Craig Menervini will be fine. All right, Ashton, go ahead. Obviously, talk about a team that resides in your state. You know probably yeah. more about them than we do. Yeah, I mean, look, the Astros have had a lot of injuries this season. Um, that you can't use it as an excuse, but it definitely takes a toll on a team. And as you all alluded to, they're getting back healthy. They're starting to. And one, nine out of the last 11, they're they're – climbing up the AL West standings and it, it was fun uh, to make fun of them while they were down, but they're coming back and, you know, hopefully we don't have to eat too much crow with them being a, a Rangers fan because we're dealing with injuries ourselves, but, and they're right in the mix of it. And something I like to say is everybody's going to lose 60 games. Everybody's going to win 60 games. It's one of the, mid, the middle games that really matter in the season. So we'll see what they do with those other 42 games. The only thing I'll say about the Rangers is this. Comes down to two words, Bruce Bochy. The guy's won a lot of world championships for crying yeah. out loud. You never count this guy out. Well, I, I, E.F. Hutton may have said, oh, I don't care about E.F. Hutton. Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember the saying, but I'm drawing a blank. But whenever Bruce Bochy gets deep into the playoffs, watch out. This guy yeah. has done it with the Giants, okay, and he's done it with the Rangers. And to be able to break through with the Texas Rangers, a team, which obviously had been to a couple of World Series under Ron Washington, couldn't finish the job. But Bruce Bochy gets in there, and this guy's going to have a statue outside of where they play when it's all said and done. You know, yeah. I mean, let's face reality. I mean, Texas, there he gets a championship before Jerry Jones has waited forever to do it. I can only imagine what that walk across the complex was like for Jerry Jones, who had to eat crow. 
the, yeah, so, they're right I'm across not, the street too. <laughs> Cowboy Stadium was right across the street, so you had to watch that parade. Yeah, I've actually gone out there and been to that complex before. I went there one time when I actually went in the ballpark for which the United Football League yeah. team actually when they renovated. And I wrote a story on t- it that'll appear on tomorrow's South Florida Tribune called "The Corner Ballpark," which talks about the Rangers moving next door and how they were able to utilize that stadium for football. So, you know, that to me is something that'll be coming out probably tomorrow as well. So, but that said, let's awesome. go back to the chat room and go from there. That song is absolutely, I don't know what we got here. What? So Joshua door for Mark, what type of teacher are you? The barber? Oh, school? no, <laughs> I actually teach health. I teach health and first aid classes. Okay. Good. Good. All right, let's, good. All right, so let's go. A rocket scientist, Josh, and the guys are on fire tonight. Good stuff. Question for Ashton: What's for dinner tonight? <laughs> I can't answer that one for you, buddy. Um, so good. I think it's hamburger helper. I don't know. My wife's already made it, so I don't know. I'll find out after the show, but uh, I'm not sure what's for dinner. I think All it's right, hamburger well, helper. There you go, Josh. That's your the preliminary answer. He'll probably let you know next Monday night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you know next time. So does anybody have a, does anybody remember that commercial about E.F. Hutton? I do. What, what is it? What E.F. Hutton speaks, you listen. Is that what it there, is? Yeah, that's close enough. All right. So there you go. So so Mark was able to connect the dots here. So whenever Bruce Bochy manages, people beware. This guy is great and he's headed to the Hall of Fame. So there you go. All right. As far as the Astros are concerned, like I said, it's early in the year, you know, and they certainly sometimes teams start off a little slow low, and you don't want to start off too slow, but it can happen. And that's the advantage of 162 game season versus 82 or 17, soon to be 18. So I'm not counting the Rangers out, but by the same token, the Houston Astros will be a player when it's all said and done. All right. Last week, George, I, I returned to my hometown, Detroit. George and I had the opportunity to cover the Tigers versus the Miami Marlins. I have to say I was at the only game where the Tigers scored any runs. Okay, the first one, a 6-5 to five win. Spencer Torkelson hit a two-run homer to win it. And Miami won that series, uh, t- t- won two out of three in that series. And both teams ended up winning their series afterwards, Detroit against Arizona and Miami against the Mets. The Tigers were shut out their last two games, but crushed the Diamondbacks 13 to nothing in the first game. Followed it up with an 8-3 to win after that. While the Marlins defeated the Mets 8-3 to on Friday, they ended up with a four-game winning streak, two in Detroit and two here at Lone Depot Park. So with that said, I'm going to go over the score sheet a little bit. And I couldn't believe this. And I was asking Skip Schumacher about that, and I'll probably mention it a little bit more possibly this week. <clears throat> and hang on to your question, Rocket. I want to get these out here. But the Tigers' bats made, okay, Trevor Rogers looked like an all-star. Bear in mind, going into this game, he was 0-6 with a 6.57 run run average. Trevor pitched five innings, didn't give up any runs, and he struck out six. Now, as I look down what we said on the other half, okay, when you look at Casey Mize in that particular game, okay, it's unfortunate that he gave up two runs early because that would be the only two runs that he, he would give up. But Mines goes six innings, gives up two runs and a heartbreaking loss. And then when you look at another game, the other shutout, okay, this is a game to me that was unbelievable. You have Reese Olsen. Well, you were talking about one of the toughest hard luck starters the Tigers have. This guy goes eight innings, doesn't give up a run, has six strikeouts, and doesn't get the win. Alex Lane got the loss. He dropped 0-3. But then you also have Ryan Weathers, okay, who had eight innings, did give up a run with four strikeouts. When you look at what we saw there in Detroit, with the exception of the first game, that was, to me, that was quality pitching the old-fashioned way that we saw, George. Some thoughts? Yeah, well, Joshua Dorr, I think you hit it right. <laughs> you said losing a series to the Marlins is embarrassing. Yeah, but you know what? They came in there, they played the game fair and square, and I don't know what the heck happened to Detroit's hitters. They could not get into it at all. Found no groove against both those pitchers like Scott just talked about. Uh, Being shut out twice at home to a team that's far under 500 is unacceptable. But what are you going to do about it? They're a young team. They're learning 
trying to sow their oats. Yeah, they got some veterans on the team, but uh, then they and then how does it, how does that work? You know, you go to Arizona and then you're gangbusters and you blow Arizona out and you got so many runs scored, twenty some runs in the first two games of that series before losing. But yeah, you're right, Scott. I mean, these pitchers of Miami, I mean, they really put on a great performance, a great show. And Schumacher had to be very happy about it. But at the same token, I know A.J. Hinch of the Tigers must have been frustrated as heck, uh, as the batters are themselves. The Tigers are not playing good at home at all. Uh, they, you know, they're under 500 at home. That, that can't continue. If you want to contend, you want to play in any division in baseball, you certainly got to have a better than 500, way better than 500 record at home. So I don't know what's going on. I think maybe some of these guys are pressing too hard. But like I said, Scott, congratulations to the Marlins. They came into Detroit, and they won two out of three. The last two, like you said, were shutouts. Yeah, for me, it was really weird. I mean, it really was a whole series. Here I am sitting next to you in the press box and talking about you guys, you guys being the Tigers, me being with the Marlins. So, yes, you know, but, yeah. but let, let me throw this stand out there that I think people should understand. The Tigers are 16 and three when scoring five plus runs and seven and 20 when they score below five runs. So there you go. So let's yeah. go back to the chat room. Okay. Rocket scientist question for Asha. What do you do for work? You look like a, or a construction manager or something. <laughs> uh, oh man. I, I have quite a few uh, jobs inside gigs. My full-time job is I sell oil to trucking companies this is a short answer. Um, I also help my brother run his graphic design, uh, graphic design and decal company called Apogee Graphics. And then I do podcasting and and cover a minor league baseball team here in Texas and and write sports articles as well. Why don't you talk? Why don't you mention the who you write for with a minor league team? You're more um, welcome to mention it if you want. Uh, to. I, I write for the Burleson Buzz. They're out out of Burleson, Texas, here just south of Fort Worth, and the team I cover is the Cleburne Railroaders of the American Association. Um, and they're actually, they had a game earlier today, so it was perfect that I came on here tonight, so I'm not even missing that game, and it, it, it's working out great. Hey, well, you know what? I love the youth of Tigers, Riley Green and, and Spencer Torkelson. I just need to see some of that youth start to mature a little bit. I really, really do. And and the pitching from Tarek School, I'll tell you, this guy's a Cy Young Award candidate for sure. He's come along. It doesn't hurt that he's wearing Mickey Lowage's number, who I still think to this day belongs in the Hall of Fame. And now, of course, Joshua's riding Will a little bit. When are you going to be on the show with Scott? Well, I don't know. TBD. Can't answer that question tonight here live. We'll see what's what. Ashton, if you haven't noticed, we love the new guests who come on the show. Yeah, we really like to make some new friends. And I like to go up there and uh, do what we got to do to keep everything active. Will Vogel is Meg and slushing. I don't know what that means. I is in Canada are solid veteran leaders in the club files. They are. They're good players, serviceable players. So with that said, you know, again, when you talk about that series, for me, I got a lot accomplished up there. I was able to go ahead and talk to Dane Myers and Tigers legend Dan Petrie. So I've got a lot of things that will be coming out of Detroit that you'll be seeing on the South Florida Tribune over the next couple of days. And, again, I look forward to not only covering the Brewers game, but my – I'm hoping that I'll be able to get up to Milwaukee later in July and cover the Brewers and the Marlins for three up over at Miller Park. With that said, let's keep it rolling here. Now, Mark, I'm going to let you take the lead on it. You want to suggest them? You get to take the lead. Fair enough. Okay. What do you want me to? What do you want me to lead on? The Skeens oh. led Pittsburgh Pirates or the Philadelphia Phillies? Oh, I'm going to get to it, man. Off we go. I'm hey. going to get to it. All right. No, <laughs> you're going to start off with the Pirates, Paul Skeens. Three big pitchers. Go ahead. I've always liked Paul Skeenies. I just hope he can win with Pittsburgh. But And I know he had a six-inning no-hitter until he was lifted. So, obviously, they may be protecting the guy. But you know what? It's, it's your topic. Lead with it. Yeah, well, uh, Skeenies through his first outing wasn't bad, but it wasn't what was expected. I think part of that was was nerves with Skeenies. He didn't pitch as dominant as he did his second outing, which was – which was nice to see. In fact, the first outing, the Pirates had a 6-1 lead, I think it was, and barely hung on to win that game 8-6. Let's get into his second outing, though. He came out and he mowed down the first seven batters he he faced. He threw something like 17 uh, balls over 100 miles an hour um, in his outing. He struck out the first seven guys, and it wasn't even close with some of those guys. Um, he really is a different dimension 
in terms of pitching. Uh, he has some, you know, I, I read something today that he said, and I thought it was really interesting. And I don't know if you want to think it's cocky or if you just want to think that, uh, you know, this guy is, is a different breed from this perspective. But somebody talked about the next time you come through and you see these other teams, they're going to adjust to you. And he said, oh, yeah, that's what you what you think. But I'm going to make an adjustment, too, before they make an adjustment to me. So he he basically had said that, you know, he changes his pitching repertoire against all these batters to to get them out before they make uh, uh, before they have an opportunity to to change against him. And what I've noticed about this guy, uh, it's been kind of amazing because he changed the culture. And I had a friend of mine who who actually runs a sports card shop in town who uh, is from LSU. He saw and met the kid when he was pitching at LSU, and he kept telling me about this kid. And he said he's he's a different breed because he comes from a military background and things of that nature. Um, he's a workhorse, and if you don't get on if you don't get on the the boat with him in terms of being a workhorse, he'll call you out. He'll 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 definitely he'll walk over and tell you about it. Um, I watched. Um, I watched them coming through the line yesterday after they beat Chicago and it came to Roddy to coming through. Cause he had played first base yesterday. He got to Skeens and Skeens pulled his hand down and uh, Roddy to is performing extremely poorly. I mean, beyond poorly, I can't believe he hasn't been DFA, but um, I think we're seeing the next, uh, uh, the next coming of age in terms of pitchers right here in Paul Skeens. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to say this, and I want to turn over to Candy Ebling for a moment because we are getting to the 28-minute mark. We have some things we want to talk about. Paul Skeenies is a guy who had a great career at LSU, and I can only hope and pray that this is one guy that the Pirates keep. You can't afford to lose prime talent. And more importantly, now MLB has a draft lottery, so you're not assured of getting the number one pick if you finish near the back end. So with that said, I do need to bring Candy Ebling in really quickly. Candy, why don't you go ahead and – Give us a bit of a station break. And then we'll turn over to Ashton next. Time for station identification. Let's pay those bills. If you want to sponsor this show or any of our shows, call Scott, 954-304-4941. If you like to listen to podcasts, you can get us find us wherever you get your podcast, whether it be iHeartRadio, Google, Apple, um, CastBox, you name it, we're on it. Grab it. Go listen to us. If you see that red subscribe button, that means you have not subscribed. Hit it, like us, share us with all of your friends and family, anybody that you think might enjoy. Monday nights is baseball. Tuesday nights is football. Wednesday nights is uh, sports exchange where we talk any kind of sports. Thursday nights we have Pundits Pundit and Fire Up. This Wednesday, however, we will be covering the Miami Marlins versus the Milwaukee Brewers. So we will not be on regular night. Scott's got a book that he wrote. It is lessons from the microphone, tuning into the enduring wisdom of visionary leaders. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kindle, um, Google and Apple. And Audio version, we are working on it. So those of you that are interested in it, we will let you know as soon as it is out. We also have a website, www.southfloridatribune.com, where you can get any apparel if you'd like from us. We have a link on the first page. Scott writes, George writes, Candy takes pictures. You can go see all of the good stuff that we have on our website. If you have any questions, ideas for show ideas you can email us at southwardattribune at gmail.com if you didn't catch any of that it is scrolling along the bottom just rewind and watch us again so you can get all the information you want back to you scott all right don't forget this thursday by the way no filter network the motor city mad mouse show will be on we'll have a brand new home so i'm working on putting everything together so It'll be a fun opportunity to make sure that we can expand the brand for the network like this. We're just trying to work out some of the bugs, but we're looking to go live this Thursday night and we'll give you more information during the course of the week. Yeah, Josh, we're going to talk about game seven tonight of the Canucks and the Oilers, but it'll be the last thing we talk about. So I told you we would earlier today and I am a man of my word and I will do that. 
But let's go back to the comments. I like this one here. Rocket Scientist, maybe the graphic company can sponsor the show. And I'm sure that, uh, who knows, if we don't have them, Ashton probably does. So it sounds pretty good. I don't know if the Cubs won on Jesse Stover's birthday. All I know is the guy's on Uranus right now because he disappeared for a while. And with that said, let's before we move on to Ashton, let's put this one up here with Will Vogel. They've got a solid team with McCutcheon, Cruz, Reynolds, Hayes, Keller, and Skeenis. It's always fun watching competitive NL Central. With that said, I will turn it over to Ashen, and you can continue on with Will's comments or incorporate your own. <clears throat> no, I uh, agreed with him a lot. I mean, Paul Skeens has a lot of hype, and and um, in that last start, he definitely lived up to it. Uh, what he pitched, he, he pitched six innings, correct? Six yeah. dominating innings. Right. You already said it was a no hitter. He had a, eleven strikeouts. Um, I know we live in a time and a day you protect, you protect the arms. There's more, uh, I'll say there's more injuries than there used to be. I, I think they're more likely to do surgeries now than they used to just because it's, you know, Tommy John surgeries used to be the end of your career. And now it's take a break for a year and a half. And sometimes they come back pitching better, but, uh, I, I don't know if you have a no hitter, just, just let them go, you know, I, I, I'm not a manager, though, so. No, but you know what, though? And it's funny how you mentioned that, though, Ashton, because I, I didn't talk to Dan Petrie about combined no-hitters. I didn't have time. I had to – because we wanted to talk about the 84 Tigers. But mm -hmm. I did make sure that there was a little bit of information about today's pitchers. And, you know, we talked about that. That will be released in the next few days here. So look for it on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. But those are great points all the way around. George, go ahead. Yeah, uh, seven strikeouts in Chicago, 17 triple-digit fastballs. As uh, we talked about, this is really eye-opening stuff. This kid has got the potential written all over him uh, in the minor leagues. He was uh, uh, really good, 45 strikeouts at uh, Indianapolis, I believe, in 27 innings. And overall, in his minor league career, 55 Ks in a 34 innings pitch. So uh, I do agree that this guy's got a ton of potential and, and certainly the Pirates have to keep him around. I also agree with you, Ashton. There's so much pressure on these young pitchers nowadays. And, and that, you know, so many of them are getting injured. You know, are we, are we, are we having them throw too fast, too soon, too hard, too soon? Who knows? But things are just, uh, unfortunately, Tommy John surgeries are more common than ever, ever before. Now, I'm not wishing anything but good luck to Paul and the Pirates because, boy, you need, as you know, Mark, you need a good, good draw uh, to, to bring the fans back in Pittsburgh. And uh, you got a great kid there. I hope nothing but the best for him. And, you know, can I jump in here, Scott? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that's what's overshadowed now is they have this kid uh, – Josh or Jared Jones, who's absolutely lights out. He made the team out of spring training. He's 21 or 22 years old. Skeens is only 21 years old. And you've got Mitch Keller that you just signed to a long-term deal. I want to say Keller is 27. So you've got, you've got a playoff potential rotation there. What you don't have is a first baseman and a power hitting outfielder. Um, they've got, they've got a lot of nice pieces. I'll say this about McCutcheon. He's rounding back into shape. It really, fellas, I can't begin to tell you how different this team has played since Skeens was called up. And that kid, that's the shortest stint I have ever seen in 20-some years of a Pittsburgh Park going through the minor leagues and getting to the bigs. Usually they want them to pitch X amount of innings or get X amount of at-bats. That's what they've done with most of these guys. This kid... This kid, they they didn't hold back on. And one other comment, I was listening to somebody talk about the arm issues a lot. And they said when these guys trot out to the mound and they know they're only going to be pitching five, six innings, whatever it is, they're throwing gas and throwing their arms out. Whereas if they go out there and they don't know exactly how many innings they're going to pitch, they're going to pace themselves a lot better, which – in that instance, there's less of a chance of you blowing your arm out. And I think from that perspective, they need to take a look at this and decide what's going to be better for these guys. Hey, Shelton is not the man for the job 
Ashton. He is just not the man for the job. That's why a guy like Boki is so well wanted as a winner. Uh, I don't know where the Pirates will go with this, but I can't see his his coaching staff getting them to the the Holy Grail. I just don't see it. All right, let me add a couple things about Pittsburgh per se. Number one, that's a great sports town. It really, really is. They've always supported the Penguins and the Steelers. If the Pirates give them anything to cheer about, they're going to put a lot of people in there. There's no question about it. And let me talk about McCutcheon. You know, first of all, he's done a lot in his career, but he's been more comfortable in Pittsburgh than anywhere else. He, he provides a veteran leadership in that clubhouse. He's well-loved in that market. So whatever you're paying the guy, he's worth his weight in gold as well. If for no other reason, his leadership ability and whatever he brings to the bat. So I just hope the Pittsburgh Pirates, you know, at some point get it right. It's a great sports town, and the Pirates fans deserve a whole lot better. And I hope that they get it. But the question is, can they stick it out? Do they have 162 games in it to be able to get in the playoffs? I don't know. We'll probably readdress this later on in the season. Last topic I want to get to for tonight, okay, and then we'll get to the hockey prediction. You know what? We're going to get a hockey prediction now. That way I don't forget about it and I don't have the wolves barking at me tomorrow when they contact me on FaceTime, okay? And that's this. And you know what, Delos? You know what? We're going to get to that. I love that question, okay? But let's talk about predictions around. We have the Vancouver Canucks facing the Edmonton Oilers. George, give me a quick prediction who wins tonight. Well, I give Edmonton credit for them back in that series, and they are being playing really good hockey, led by our friend Ken Holland in the front office. Right. Uh, it's going to be a real war tonight. It really is. Hockey Den Canada is going to be there. Of course, ESPN is going to be there. I'm going to say because they're the home team, though, I'm going to go with the Canucks winning 4-3 to three and moving on to the next round. What about you, Mark? I have a problem with the Canucks because Boser's not playing tonight. They're leading yeah, goal scorer go. in the playoffs. And, and I think for that reason alone, um, that Edmonton will finally get back to the, the Western Conference finals. But I do like Dallas once they get there. Yeah, well, you know what? Before I go with Ashton, Mark, you ended up in the GMTA great minds think alike. Before Bozer's situation, I was leaning the other way. But because of the Bozer situation, I'm with you all the way. I don't have to say it. You did my talking for me. Now it's Ashton. Go ahead. Give me something, buddy. Uh, I have the Canucks winning. Um, okay. I, I don't want them to because they're going to play Dallas next. And I guess just in my mind, traditionally, the Stars haven't done well against the Canucks. But I have the Canucks pulling it out tonight. Very good. All right. Well, you know what? Broadway Harewood says I like Dallas as well. All right. You know what? I like this question here by D. Lowe's, and then I'll put it – I'll incorporate it now. Then we'll talk about the Phillies. Question for the whole gang. What's your favorite baseball movie? I can start. Oh, my God. There's so many good ones. Oh, I'm going to go with one real old one, Bang the Drum Slowly, a very mm -hmm. old movie that was really a heart heartbreaking movie. Uh, um, and uh, <laughs> I'm not going to spend time talking about the plot, but that was a great movie when I was a kid. Bang the drum slowly. Okay, what about you, Ashton? As far as uh, sports movies go, I think baseball um, are some of the best sports movies. Uh, Field of Dreams is like the main one that sticks out to me. A anytime I see it on TV, I have to stop and watch it. Um, I like B uh, Bull Durham as well, but I'll say Field of Dreams is my favorite. All right, Mark. Well, hell, I'm going to go outside of the box. The Bad News Bears, fella. <laughs> well, who doesn't love a great little league team with a lot of character on it, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, well, well, you know what? I'm going to go with Field of Dreams, and I'll tell you why. I, I love the movie as it is, but when you go ahead and visit the Field of Dreams site, boy, it really – does something i know mark you know you've been to the cooperstown i've been to cooperstown i don't know if you've been to some of the big major places uh baseball wise ashton but when i went to the field of dreams movie site and did a few videos by the way which are on the south florida tribune youtube channel there's no doubt in my mind okay that i had to go there all right katie come back on they want to hear your favorite baseball movie as well they want to hear mine oh my goodness um oh are you gonna work hard. That's really hard because I do like Field of Dreams. I also like Major League. 
That's a good one, you know. And then there's there's oh there's also there's no crying in baseball with Tom Hanks about you know the girls' league. I forget what the a league of their own. So there, I mean, there's just a there's a whole slew of other ones that you could go on and on. But um, I agree, baseball's probably got one out of of the sports. The baseball movies are probably the best movies, as opposed to like there's not that many. There's some on the NFL. There's some on basketball but um yeah i think baseball's got the best of them yeah but wasn't there a movie that you were a part of candy where you're like a extra yes i was actually a paid extra in mr 3000 which is um that was based in milwaukee i mean well it was filmed partly in milwaukee and so yes i was a paid extra on that movie tom selick Don't hold your breath, D. Lowe's. Uh, Will giving you a movie. I don't know if he's still here on the chat, but hey, you got five of us to talk about it. I think you're way ahead of the game, anyhow. Ash and the other guys are told are too old, but you look like you played some backyard baseball in the PC back in the day. Great game. Uh, a little bit, yeah. I have played that before. Look at this guy. Lowe's is on fire tonight. All you right, know what, the- you know what, Scott? Real quick, we know another person that was in a baseball movie. Our friend Tony DeMarco. And Tony DeMarco was at Tiger Stadium when they filmed this movie called Tiger Town with Roy Scheider as the star. It was a Disney movie, and our sports writer Tony DeMarco had a small role in that movie. Well, I'll say one thing about Tony DeMarco. He's my mentor. That's all I have to say. He's the greatest. Yeah. That's all I can say. Tony, you are the greatest. Uh, So, you know, my mentor, you're in the movie, so be it. All right. Last thing I want to get to tonight. And we'll talk about the Philadelphia Phillies, 34 up, 14 down, 20 games over 500. Obviously, Mark, you cited good all-around play. I say anytime you got Bryce Harper on there, you're doing awfully good. We'll take the lead on this. Well, you know, it's not just Harper. It's the fact that their pitching staff has a 2.63 ERA. They're at the top of the league. They're, I mean, guys, no matter – no matter what, that pitching staff is on fire for them. And and Harper is playing like Harper at 26 years old, not like he played last year. Like he's been amazing to watch. How many walk-offs does he have this year already? You know, it, it's been – I'm not even a Philly fan, but I got sucked into their world here because they've been so fun to watch and so dominant. They're just very dominant. I'll make this short and sweet that I want to turn over to – Ashton and George, anytime to me you have a team with Bryce Harper, I will take him in any era. A guy that runs into walls and hits the way he hits and the passion and the love that the guy has for the game to me, he could play in any era. And I can't say that about a lot of today's players. But Bryce Harper, would to me, he's definitely going into the Hall of Fame if he keeps on the pace that he's going. But if I had to build a team in Major League Baseball, I would take Bryce Harper over Shohei Otani. That's me. All right. With that said, Ashton, go ahead. This is a team that I've done a little prep on because the Rangers do start a series with them tomorrow. Um, they got to play against Ranger Suarez. You also have Zach Wheeler, Wheeler, Aaron Nola in that rotation. And their bullpen, like just a bunch of power arms in their bullpen. It's going to be, I mean, and you don't eat, that's without mentioning Bryce Harper. Um, they're a tough team. I think they have the best record in the league. I think they're they do. Yeah. So I, it's just ridiculous to have to play with them. Um, and how the Rangers have been playing with a couple of uh, a below 500 teams. I just hope they can steal a win out of this and avoid a sweep. All right, Katie, back to the chat room. Let's put what both of Will Vogel's comments up. Phillies are a solid team with Suarez, Nola, Wheeler, Harper, Marsh and Bohm, I guess Will Vogel is hungry for some airtime or any time. So that's one way to get my good graces. Real me- And then the other one, Real Mudo, Castellanos, Schwarber, I think they can make a run at the NLS. Will, I think you fall into the GMTA. Great minds think alike. Airtime, though, I don't decide when to lie. But, Will, you know, you're doing good tonight. All right, George, go ahead. Well, again, you know, you got a great Detroit connection there. You got uh, uh, one of the best brilliant minds in baseball, and that's uh, Dave Dombrowski in the front office. you got Nick Castellanos, who the Tigers traded. you got Spencer Turnbull, who the Tigers got rid of. you got Cody Clements, who the Tigers got rid of. So I really ruined for them because I'd like to see the former Detroiters do well. 
And uh, for all the great reasons that you said, I mean, this Bryce Harper is unbelievable. Like you said, Scott, he's playing like a 20, 25 year old kid right now, getting the hitting the cover off the ball and doing a fantastic job. Phillies are going to be hard to beat. I know Atlanta, Los Angeles, those teams are out there, and, but it's going to be a tough, tough race to the finish to try to beat out Philadelphia and, uh, for the National League pennant. You're welcome. Well, thank you for the praises. You're welcome. You're, you put in some really good stuff tonight. Anytime we have great comments like you have, it makes our job a bit easier. All hail well. Might make a friend or two out there before it's all said done tonight. But, <clears throat> and now we got Robert Wardell. Go Mariners. Well, I don't know. It's a long season. We'll see what happens to the folks in the Pacific Northwest. So with that said, you know, again, it's been great having Ash and Nick's on. Looking forward to having them more often. This guy's a cool customer that we have on this show tonight. You can only imagine how good he is on his particular shows, but thanks to Twitter X, Ashton's the latest member of our crew tonight. So with that said, Candy, go back one more time and give us a station break. We'll go around the horn and we'll call it a night. There's obviously a hockey game going on and a very important one with obviously Vancouver and Edmonton, but go ahead, Candy. Scott wrote a book. It is called Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It is available. Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Kindle, Google, and Apple. It talks about his 40-plus years in the media business and how media has changed over those 40 years. If you see that red subscribe button, hit it, like us, share us with all your friends. We talk baseball on Mondays, football on Tuesdays, Wednesday night, you just never know, although this week we were going to be covering the Miami Marlins versus the Milwaukee Brewers. Thursday night is Pundit's Pundit. Fire up, but we are going to, this week, we are going to be debuting on the No Filter platform, Motor City Mad Mouth Show, which is all Scott. Never know who he's going to be talking to or interviewing, so you'll have to tune in to see. Go to our website, www.selfflorida.tribune.com. You can see the writings of Scott, George, my pictures. Um, lots of other transcripts, lots of other good material. Go there, check us out. If you like to podcast, we're on all the platforms wherever you get your podcast. If you have ideas, email us, southfloridatribune at gmail.com. Twitter is at Tribune South. And if you would like to sponsor a show, call Scott, 954-304-4941. And if I talk too fast. Everything's scrolling at the bottom. Back to you, Scott. Yeah, if you learn to talk too fast, you learn from me. So how can I tell you? I'm not so sure you want to learn everything from me. All right, let's go back to the chat room. Joshua Dorr, my money's on Edmonton. McDavid is getting the W. It's pretty hard to debate against you there. D. Lowe's, great having you on, Ashton. Look at this, Ashton. You're making some friends out here, pal. Appreciate okay. it. Joshua Dorr, hope to see you again. Ashton, will you be a, a regular on the network? I don't know. What do you want? You want to be a regular on Monday night? I'll have to, I'll have to check on my schedule. I'm very busy, but anytime I can get on, I will be on. That sounds good to me. All right, let's go back to D. Lowe's, all right? Uh, we'll, be, we'll be there. Made my no-filter account today. Yeah, he sure did. If you haven't made a no-filter account to follow me with the, with the Motor City Man Mouse Show, plenty of time to do it before we get cranking for good on Thursday. Joshua Dorr just drank. Hey, what costs so I can step for the game? What's chaos? Nah, chaos? I, don't know. I don't know what that is. Me either. I don't drink that much to know any better. Joshua Dorr made his no filter account. So, but that said, you know, it is hard to follow games on the West Coast for sure. But you know what? That when it comes to Stanley Cup time later, they end up getting moved a little bit earlier. But that said, you know what, Ash, I want to let you lead off here. Let everybody know how they can get a hold of you, your Twitter account your YouTube channel, lay it all out there. You certainly made some friends tonight. Uh, well, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me be on. Uh, pretty unique name, Ashton Nick. So you search that on uh, any social media platform. I'm there. Uh, my network is Peak One Sports Network at Peak One Sports, however you want to find it, where whatever uh, social media networks or profiles you are uh, on. And yeah, just go check it out. We have... Multiple shows uh, that go out throughout the week. I'm on a Saturday morning show called The Lead Off every Saturday morning. I jump on on Wednesday nights with a, a local podcast we have here. Um, and then we have a, a hockey one. I'm not on the hockey one, but we have some great guys that do that. And then a couple of other ones in the works. 
Very good. Well, we're glad that you were nice, kind enough to spend your Monday night with us. Oh, and again, you know, yeah, the, the chat room and everybody here has a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for you. And I know your schedule will determine the amount of availability, but I can tell you right now, you know, you certainly uh, turned out to be a uh, great addition for us tonight. We're once again so happy to have you. All right, Mark, go ahead. Uh, you can find the original sports podcast with Mark Meriday. Uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts, we're on YouTube, we're on uh, Facebook, we stream live on Tuesday nights, we drop our show's audio on Thursdays at 7 a.m., and we're also on Roku on ESEN on Tuesday nights from 9 to 10. Um, do a variety of shows. We've got three shows we're having this week, though. Uh, tomorrow night, we're doing a special NFL schedule show we got a nice little wheel set up, and we're going to spin the wheel, and wherever it lands, we're going to pick 10 different teams and break down their schedule. Friday, we have the the CEO of the uh, Premier Lacrosse League on to talk uh, all things lacrosse. Uh, it's it's a growing sport, and uh, I happen to know the young man uh, personally. And Sunday, we are on location at a local distillery, McClintock Distillery. If you're a gin drinker or vodka drinker, guys, that's the place to get it at. All right, George, go ahead. You can read my works on South Florida Tribune, drill down to the Motor City Tribune, where you'll find my column. At the end of that column is always a little link to, uh, if you want to look at my book or purchase my book, it's called Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air, and uh, it's available through Amazon mostly. And also, Scott is in the book, too, when he was much younger. In fact, I'm much younger in that book, too, by the way. But, hey, you can read me on South Florida Tribune. Like I said, the Motor City Tribune. You can reach me on Yahoo. George G. I. Corn at Yahoo.com, at Twitter at Sanji Sports 99. And also, I'm on LinkedIn quite a bit. And enjoy this show, 108 Stitches. Enjoy other shows, the Sports Exchange. And wherever Scott needs me, it's a wonderful network and being proud of it and proud of it, uh, all the efforts put into this network by Scott and Candy. All right. Thank you, George. Again, I've been working with you forever, and it's great wherever I go, you go, you know, for the most part. But meanwhile, great effort by the chat room. These guys are absolutely fantastic. Then again, they always are. So meanwhile, on behalf of George Icorn, Mark Meriday, and Ash and Nick, my name is Scott Morgan Roth. Thank you for joining us on this edition of 108 Stitches Baseball Talk this week on the Diamond. And we will be on next Monday night. Have a great week. We have inside we have 100 inside the pigskin on Tuesday night. Hope you can join us. Take care, everybody, and have a great week. Bye now.